Hello, everybody. I would like to welcome everybody who joined us today to receive with great honor our friend and our dermatologist, Dr. Alfred Belbul, enlightening us about healthy skin, what can we do to achieve and maintain. It is a topic that interests all of us. I would like now to invite Lizette Shashua to read for us a short biography of our dear speaker, Dr. Alfred Belgol. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me, Gladys. Um, and it's wonderful to be back in beautiful, warm, welcoming Montreal. Anyway, I'd like to read Dr. Balbul's bio. Alfred Balbul. Dr. Balbul attended McGill University in 1975 to 78, where he obtained an honors degree in chemistry at his parents' insistence he enrolled in medical school and he graduated from McGill in 1982. After specialty training in dermatology and certification in Canada and the USA in 1987, he was appointed a clinical professor of medicine. However, he spent the majority of his time in private practice. His interests include medical and surgical dermatology, as well as laser and aesthetic medicine. Dr. Balbul lectures frequently to other medical professionals professionals and is honored to be invited to present to the women's learning group in the Spanish and Portuguese of the synagogue of in Montreal. Thank you, Dr. Balbul, for joining us. Bravo. Thank you, Lizette, for reading the beautiful biography of uh, Dr. Balbul. And I would like to invite now with great honor, Dr. Alfred Balbul. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gladys. Thank you, Lizette. Thank you, everybody. Grace as well. I really enjoy. I really enjoy presenting whenever I can. And for me, this is like a coming home. So I'm very, very happy to to be here and presenting this with you. Let me try one more time. The title of the, the talk today is basically healthy skin. What we can do to to achieve and maintain it. And I think I, I sort of put it on as a uh, uh, very hopeful subject because there's so much to discuss and then. Uh, so little time, so I really cut it into very uh, uh, small sections on, on uh, healthy skin and how to how to uh, what we can do. There's not much. I think just staying healthy is the main thing to to be to have healthy skin. But uh, because it's May and, and it's a time of year that we uh, tend to go outside more, and the sun is very strong, I'm going to spend a lot of the time talking about sunscreen. If you have questions, you can put it in the chat and ask uh, uh, towards the end. I'll try and uh, and answer questions as much as I can at the end as well. So let's see if this works. Okay, so the agenda is what parts of, of uh, uh, healthy skin has to do with really with uh, our nature, like, like our gene pool of where, where, where we came from, our parents, and what part of it is nurturous, how we take care of ourselves. And a big amount of it is to do with nurture. Like we can't change our, our, uh, our, our genetics, our ethnicity, uh, but we can, as certainly uh, men and women age differently. So it's something that, that we... Uh, we, we want to talk about as well. We'll talk a fair amount about uh, diet. We'll talk very little about skincare because I don't think it, I think it, it, people exaggerate how much good it does. And we'll spend a lot of time on, on sun avoidance and, and sunscreens per se. So uh, the, the nature is basically how, how we were born. So, uh, so one thing that I should have uh, uh, done as well is if you want to see how your spouse will age, look at your mother-in-law if you're a man or, or, your, or your parents-in-law if you're a woman, and this is there basically 30 or 40 years later, that's whom you're gonna be with uh, down the line. So I was very lucky, I have a very, very beautiful parents-in-law. Um, uh, but <clears throat> in, ge in general, it's something that's very reproducible. Uh, I just read an article about blacks specifically and, and their skin and blacks, age for age, especially as we get older, like past 40, they're literally 15 years younger skin-wise than uh, Europeans and Caucasians. So that sometimes, uh, you know, people keep talking about how, how terrible, uh, you know, how, how uh, uh, life treats badly uh, Africans. I think in this aspect, they're definitely winners in the sense that they, they look and they, uh, the skin behaves much younger than their, their uh, given numbers. Asians also, to some degree, also have a, an advantage over 
uh, Caucasians and Med Mediterranean people. And I think a big part of it is that their culture is very much related to Sanabodas. So they also look, uh, or they stay younger than their stated age uh, very frequently. Uh, men, it is said, men age better as far as their skin goes. And I think it has to do with, with the hormone levels and the bony structure. We'll talk about aging of the skin momentarily, but men generally, uh, if they're not uh, in the sun and they don't smoke, they tend to become, uh, their skin tends to uh, uh, maintain a better shape uh, than, than, uh, uh, than women to, to a large degree. Aging is a big player, obviously. And the, the point about aging of the skin is people want to come in and buy a, buy a cream or do, do something to the surface. And it's really much more, it's much deeper than just uh, the skin. So uh, we have now better, you know, better follow-up, and we see that it's not only the epidermis like the surface, but the dermis, the actual thickness of the skin gets thinner, and the fat distribution in the face changes so that uh, fat moves down and then towards the face, which sort of gives, gives us the jowls. The muscles become more lax. Uh, the muscles in the center of the face, like eye-closing muscles, uh, uh, speaking muscles, uh, tend to pull things into the center of the face too. That also gives us the uh, more concentration in the center, and even the deep tissues. And the the fun thing that we can do now is we can take really excellent pictures of uh, the, the bones of the, of the the head and show how they how they change over time. So that uh, cats, scans and things like that over years, even on normal people, can show that there are changes actually in the bone itself. So so uh, very often people come in and say, you know, what what's been uh, what cream should I be using? Uh, it really addresses probably the, the first part that I didn't even mention, which is the epidermis. They, they don't really mention much more than that. So, so very often, uh, all these promises that these creams are making are, are overselling. <clears throat> so this is uh, a bit of a dramatic picture, but what I want to, to get at you is, uh, if this is the same person 50 or 60 years later, that you, you see that the, the changes that are taking place uh, sometimes have to do with, with muscle movement, like, like uh, uh, these lines are related to the eye closing. Uh, fat movement, so the, the fat that was out here became further down on this area. The lips became lower and flatter. Uh, the texture of the skin changed. A lot of this is sun, is sun damage. And even the shape of the cheekbone, the, the zygoma it's called, is, is very much deflated because there, there's actually bony changes that take place. And with that, all the other things that follow, there's excess skin, skin laxity in the upper eyelid, et cetera. So, that, so when we're addressing uh, things that have to do with aging, basically we wanna start at, at, on this side of the picture on, on, uh, in the young person and try and do whatever we can to maintain the texture of the skin and, uh, uh, and all the other aspects, uh, muscle function, uh, bony resorption, all these things have an effect to, to, uh, uh, to some degree. So it's not just a question of just, you know, what do we do with the skin as far as aging goes. Now this part uh, <clears throat> that uh, we skipped the, the aging part and we talk about the diet. Diet is things that we can definitely make a difference with. Uh, basically, the, these are the things that, that uh, our, when, when you talk to a dietitian, these are the things that they want to, to talk about, basically taking vitamin supplements, drinking more water, and then they, they divide the, the, the nutrition into proteins, fats, and sugars. I think this is very traditional. This is something that, that we learned uh, uh, 40 or 50 years ago. And in a big way, I, I wanted to think of this in a very different way. I think that generally our diets are, are very adequate and we want to just tweak a little bit. Uh, there is no evidence, for example, that drinking more water makes your skin more hydrated. I think that this is, uh, people want to sell that, and I think that it's, it's uh, wonderful. It's very good for the kidneys. It's very good for other parts of the body. But uh, uh, water, you should definitely drink water, but not thinking that you're going to make your skin better. Uh, vitamins also, so vitamin supplements really have very little room. Like, they really don't add very much. I think the latest craze, if somebody doesn't ask me, I might as well ask it now, is uh, every third person asks me whether they should take collagen supplements. And there's really very little uh, purpose in taking collagen supplements uh, in, in the sense of adding to, to the, the, the texture of the skin. Uh, proteins, fats, and sugars, this is a, a good idea. But basically what we want to do as far as the vitamins are concerned are, these are the three that really matter, A, C, and E. Uh, vitamin A has to do with signaling of the 
the skin, uh, building better uh, uh, protein. It helps maturation. It also acts as an antioxidant. C is, uh, vitamin C is not, it's, but it's a good way to remember it is very much involved in building collagen, so C for collagen. And if you don't have uh, vitamin C, you get scurvy, where part of this is they get fragile skin, uh, bad gums, uh, uh, and basically bleeding of the skin because, because the skin becomes fragile. So vitamin C is very important. And E uh, is for as an antioxidant. Uh, antioxidant is basically, uh, also it helps the breakdown of, of the skin as, as things go. Now, the thing that I really learned, by the way, this is, if you want to look this up, this is very uh, uh, fun stuff. There's a dermatologist, uh, I think in California called Zoe Drelos. Maybe I'll write it at the end in the chat. And she's sort of, I, I just attended one of her uh, uh, lectures and this is where she's very big on all the things that I'm telling you now as far as how to keep your skin young. So she's, you're not hearing it only from me, but, but from this. So yeah. the three vitamins are yeah. vitamins A, C, and E. Uh, now, vitamin E uh, is used up so, so that we used to be taught that vitamin E uh, can be stored in the liver and we can use it later. It really isn't. So, so if you're taking vitamin E, you really want to take vitamin E every day and you want to take it in your diet. Now, this is very simple as to how, what advice we want to get uh, as far as things go. And so uh, the things that we want to, uh, to add to your diet are very simple. For vitamin A, we want you to eat uh, carrots. If, if uh, you don't like carrots, you can uh, uh, chop them up, make carrot salad. Uh, some other vegetables also have vitamin A, like sweet potatoes, uh, but also avocados will be repeating again and again. I think avocados have vitamin A. They don't have vitamin C, but they have vitamin E very well. So uh, we want you to eat about two carrots a day. And for vitamin C, don't take or it, it doesn't help to take the vitamin pills. Try and eat baby tomatoes. And the amount of baby tomatoes we want you to eat is about half a cup to a cup a day. It's simpler to use than, than, than uh, the, the big tomatoes, but big tomatoes are okay too. Citrus fruits also are, are useful, but they have they, they tend to have a bit more sugar in them. Uh, we're big fans of avocados. So if I can convince people uh, to eat avocados, it, it's excellent as a vitamin uh, E uh, source and also uh, it has an effect of uh, being useful for the type of fat that it has is very good for the skin as well. So it's monosaturated fat. This is very, very healthy fat. So uh, I don't have any shares. I don't have an avocado farm, but if I can convince you to uh, 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 eat, uh, include it in your diet more often, that helps a lot. Vitamin D I added here by default because the next part of the talk is going to be about avoiding the sun and this and one of the benefits of the sun is that it uh, uh, makes us build vitamin d in, in the skin so by uh, us avoiding the sun we're going to become vitamin d deficient so this is one thing that we definitely want to supplement with vitamin d uh, because uh, uh, otherwise we would be vitamin d deficient and that that would be a, produce fragile bones, et cetera. So we want you to take the advice of your doctors that take the vitamin D supplement, especially if you're staying away from the sun. Um, oops. So uh, that was the part about the diet. So it's relatively easy stuff that we talked about. We talked really adding uh, vegetables to your diet, uh, changing other stuff, changing your protein, uh, doesn't really change very much. Uh, but these are the, the things that actually make a difference as far as adding naturally the, the components that, that make for a better skin. As far as uh, skincare, I really don't want to spend much time on it. Uh, there's a lot of beliefs, a lot of uh, uh, arguments, a lot of uh, 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 things that are not scientifically based, including the stuff that's given by doctors. So, so uh, medicine is not a belief system. I'm talking to a, to a synagogue group, so it's very, belief, believing is very important, but in, in medicine, in science, beliefs don't work. It, it, either it's true or it's not true. And beliefs, myths are, are, are for another, you know, for, for, for other discussions. We really want to talk about what things really make a difference. What are the facts? And there's very little solid evidence for these things. So uh, part one is basically washing. Uh, this is the thing that I probably, if, if I ever saw any of you in, in, in person in my office, you would all know that I tell people wash less. Uh, I thought my professor was crazy when he taught me that <laughs> 35, 40 years ago. 
and uh, as we get older, we see we see how smart they were. So uh, the point about uh, the skin is that the skin is is a beautifully uh, if you want to, if you don't believe in it, it's beautifully evolved. If you if you believe in it, it's beautifully created piece uh, piece of uh, engineering that is really designed perfectly for our uh, our our skin, our body temperature, the environment around us, and we really should not be interfering with this very smart barrier that we have in our skin. So the point that I make is that in areas that don't get dirty, whenever you can, wash with water, because water doesn't wash off the oil barrier. I, I reserve soaps for very uh, uh, less often, so once a day would probably be, would be plenty, and for really the areas that, that uh, produce dirt oil. Uh, when to wash the face is something that I, I think is very important and is never mentioned by anybody else, but, uh, but I will say it again. Uh, please don't wash with cleansers in the morning. The oils that you have on our skin uh, and the, the superficial layers actually function as a sunscreen. So, so if you wash your face and you scrub it and you clean your face and you feel great, uh, you now just made your skin more sun sensitive to further damage uh, down the line for, you know, when, when uh, uh, all, all the pollution that comes on our face and, and especially the sun. So in the morning, please wash with water. Uh, there's tons of products as far as uh, soaps, uh, synthets, gels. Uh, if you don't know it, uh, there's something called micellar water, which is, uh, it looks like water and you put it on with a with an eye makeup pad and it's great for removing eye makeup and makeup in general and it doesn't dry the face as much. So if those of you that have sensitive skin, you can try this out, They're not, it's not expensive and uh, they sell it in all the pharmacies. So it's a very different sort of uh, uh, cleanser. For sure, for sure, we want you to avoid uh, physical scrubs, exfoliating, scrubbing, uh, uh, things that remove the layers of the skin. It's a really big problem. Uh, uh, I don't want to pick on ethnic groups, but certain, you know who you are. There are certain people that are convinced that they're doing good to their skin when they're scrubbing, and I, I have a very tough time uh, convincing them. Uh, the, sad, the sad thing is that uh, if you take an eye makeup pad and you scrub somebody who has dark skin, uh, say an African, they, they, they will be removing two layers or three layers of skin and it's going to be brown. There's going to be brown on the pad and they think that they're removing dirt. They're actually removing their skin. Uh, we really try to encourage them not, not to do exfoliations and, and scrubbing because it gives the skin that sort of a dull gray color as opposed to uh, the nice texture of the skin that we should have uh, if we just uh, let it be by itself. So this is basically everything on, on washing. So wash less. If you're going to wash, do it in the, do it in the evening and, and really try and use uh, things that are very gentle. Moisturizers are, uh, do have a benefit. They tend to improve basically the plasticity of the skin. The skin becomes more, more so soft, more supple. It feels better. And it probably functions better as well as far as acting as a barrier. Over moisturizers also, we don't want to get to, to, to do stuff that's very... Uh, uh, over moisturized because it tends to, to break down the skin. So we're not happy with things that are like Vaseline based or very oily, unless there are areas that are that like the bottom of the feet or elbows and knees because they tend to become actually overly moisturized and they can get uh, uh, damaged that way too. So we, we want you to use moisturizers, that, but they're not really asking as much. They're not going to provide all the, the promises that the companies are giving you, but they do have some uh, some benefit as far as uh, the plasticity and the texture and the, the feel of the skin. The, the thing that was very exciting and sort of as a digression is we started putting exactly the same ingredients as are, nat as are naturally found in the barrier of the skin. So we are putting on the barrier of the skin is made of, uh, believe it or not, of cholesterol. Uh, all, the, all the bad things that, that we're not supposed to be eating are on the surface of the skin. So that they, they are supposed to be there for some reason, but it's cholesterol something called ceramides and triglycerides, which are saturated, which again, things are not, which you would find in meat and, and, uh, and heavy things. We're not suggesting you eat it because the body uh, actually produces them. And the point is that the body can actually take these ingredients if you put them on the skin and rebuild the barrier. So the, the, the exciting thing is if we, if we put this on, and especially if we're not scrubbing the skin, we can actually help rebuild the barrier by, by using uh, some of these uh, more modern moisturizers. And so if you're happy with ones you, you, you're using, keep, uh, keep doing it. And otherwise we, we can always uh, discuss it first. I don't like to give specific brands, but, but they, do, they do have 
uh, some benefit. I don't want to oversell it. Now, this is really where all the, where everybody wants to know what is the thing that's going to make me younger. Remember, there's a big limitation as far as it goes because they only treat like the one component that's on the surface. They don't treat the, all the, the, the deeper stuff. The first and, and really most uh, uh, well-known one is vitamin A and derivatives that uh, you would know it as retinol or as uh, it's a prescription, it's called retin-A. There are other retinaldehyde, there's other synthetic uh, vitamin A uh, products, and they have an effect that is really the only one that is proven to have an effect on anti-aging. Uh, what am I saying as far as it's proven is that they actually convince people to do a biopsy before, wait three months, put the cream on uh, to a similar area of the face and do another biopsy. So these people ended up with two holes on their face to prove the point that the, their skin got better, but they do, we do see that the skin got much, uh, much better as a result of it. So vitamin A, uh, so if you're using and if you're going to buy uh, uh, things over the counter, you would be looking for things that, that have retinol in them. And uh, they do have an effect. It's a modest effect, but, but they do have an effect. And they're very well uh, distributed. So they're not a very, it's not a very expensive uh, uh, proposition to buy these products. The next one, vitamin C is another one that, uh, that is used for anti-aging or to, to improve wrinkles, and it really does work. The problem with it is it is not stable in the cream, so that it's very difficult to make a cream that, that or a serum or, or a product that will actually go uh, stay in the, the bottle in a stable way and penetrate through the epidermis to, to build collagen. So uh, it's very difficult to find products that, that are effective, but if it's in a good formulation, it will work. So just putting vitamin C in a cream and hoping that it works probably is not doing very much except uh, uh, stabilizing the cream because it is an antioxidant. But it doesn't do very much for uh, as far as, you know, you have to really get good advice as things go. The next one, which is also very popular, are uh, AHAs, alpha hydroxy acids and BHAs. The names are not important. Uh, beta hydroxy acids. They uh, they are known as like glycolic acid, uh, and they have an effect to really improve the texture of the skin. They're probably good for a younger age group, and, but they do have an effect to make the skin shinier, smoother, and they do perhaps add to the effect of vitamin C and vitamin A. So we do use them. Lactic acid is another one. So there's uh, the moisturizers with lactic acid that also have an effect. Uh, it also belongs to this family. And so they have an effect in, in improving the, the texture of the skin. And the newest thing to the, that's added on now is something called hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is, is the normal uh, ingredient that gives the skin sort of the puffy texture. So if I can explain to you what hyaluronic acid does is if you feel like the, the, the arm of a, of a six month old baby and it feels like a sponge, uh, basically, this is mostly hyaluronic acid that's doing that, so that it's, it's, it holds water and it has a, a nice texture to the skin. This is the selling point. The reality is that hyaluronic acid applied to the surface of the skin stays on the surface and just holds water. So it has an effect, but it's a very much more of a cosmetic effect. It doesn't have any long-lasting effect. It just holds water. It makes the skin smoother. It makes the skin feel better, but it's not active as far as regenerating our skin or making us better. So the, the, the last three that we talked about, we're really hoping that we're regenerating by making an effect that is just beyond today. So a cosmetic is for today. We're trying to do something that has more of a long lasting effect. Uh, the final thing is uh, botanicals. Uh, botanicals means uh, derivatives of plants. Derivatives of plants would be uh, many different things that started probably from folklore, uh, things that we try out in, in, in the lab and we find out that they are uh, that they have some effect that people feel, feel better doing it. The problem with it is that botanicals are very difficult to reproduce. So even the same, uh, the same plant, the same species grown in a different field will have different botanicals. So that if uh, we're in a different year, one year will be a, a dry year, one will be a, a more rainy year, a sunny year, or whatever. So that it's uh, the, the analogy I would want to give you is what when you taste wine. So the same field, the same uh, vineyard uh, makes wine in 1987 and 1989, and they taste totally different. 
because not because they did the, the, the plants are the same, but the, the weather, the conditions are different, and the, the time of the harvest, etc. So uh, the point I'm making is botanicals are very difficult to reproduce. In addition to that, how they isolate the ingredient in the botanical to be effective is, the, is a very deeply kept secret. So sometimes it's isolated with alcohol or acetone or an oil, or they boil it with, with uh, they distill it. So uh, even the same plant, if I'm just taking zata, taking uh, thyme and, and trying to, uh, to isolate it, the taste is going to be very different. Like the extract of thyme is going to be very different from, from one lab to another lab. So botanicals are very difficult to give advice on, uh, but they're definitely there. They do perhaps have an effect, but, but I don't want to negate it and say, no, uh, this is uh, all, uh, uh, witchcraft or whatever, they have an effect, but it's very difficult for me to give you advice and tell you, oh, this one is good or that one is not good, because uh, even between batches of the same cream, they may have different uh, activities. Also, the amount that they put in are very small, so it's very doubtful if they're really doing very much. So this is basically the, uh, we're about halfway, the other half we're going to be talking about uh, mostly sunscreens. So, uh, if you want to fall asleep now, I'll, I'll say everything that I want to say is, is basically use sunscreen, uh, use it a lot, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, it has a, the biggest effect as far as anti-aging that we can do uh, starting early in life and, and right to 120 sunscreens do make a difference. Now, what is a sunscreen? Uh, sunscreens are basically cut the ultraviolet light now. If they cut visible light, they become they become visible. Okay, so we're trying to create a product that we apply on the skin that you cannot see, that is not visible, but is, that is blocking all the ultraviolet light. So basically, the uh, uh, the effects that we are trying to, to prevent is obviously sunburn. Sunburn happens by ultraviolet B, UVB, uh, and to some degree by ultraviolet A. The point that but the next area is basically photo aging and photo aging. Even though they put a lot on the UVB, people would sunburn before they get photo aged. So uh, UVA is a much bigger player for photo aging. Photo aging is the, the sprinkles that you get from, uh, from the sun. Cancers are caused mostly by ultraviolet B, and these are the, this is the main reason that, that uh, as dermatologists we talk about uh, we talk about preventing, uh, putting on sunscreen is to prevent skin cancer, but we really want to do beyond that and really take better care as far as things go with, with, uh, uh, with that, beyond just preventing skin cancer, but really talking about improving the quality of the skin. Uh, for those of you that, that I noticed that a long time ago, that whenever I came back from holiday, I caught a cold so that they definitely, your immune system is suppressed, is pushed down by sun exposure. So that's another reason to, to stay away from the sun. And some medications or some uh, 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 creams applied on the skin can produce uh, rashes and that is caused by UVA. So the, the point I'm making is that we want to uh, have an effect that has a, a sunscreen that has an effect not only on UVB, which is the old sunscreens, but have an effect on what I read, which was again a couple of weeks ago, uh, so we don't want to be invisible light. So um, uh, maybe there's something to be said about wearing workers, but I don't know. But uh, but uh, beyond that, uh, uh, we want to really protect UVB and UVA. I want you to be a smart consumer as far as things go, uh, as to know if I if I'm buying something, what am I buying? Uh, and the number that they always uh, state is the SPF, the sun protection factor. The sun protection factor is very simple. We 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 put a, a a solar simulator, meaning a light bulb that produces the same light as the sun or close enough. And we expose a small area of your forearm. Uh, and we see how long does it take for you to get red? Okay, the, the, this determination to do that. And they say with, with this machine, it takes 35 seconds and you, you turn red. Now we put on sunscreen on a similar area and we see how long will does it happen till the, that area turns red. And that time divided by the other time measures the SPF. So if, if it took one minute without sunscreen and 15 minutes with, with the sunscreen, then you have an SPF of 50. Now this measures specifically the, the, the damage caused by UVB because UVA 
generally uh, UVA2 is the, is the band just next to the UVB. But it's mostly, for our purposes, it's mostly UVB that is measured by the SPF. In general, that's excellent because you're not going to get sunburned. And very likely also, you're not going to get skin cancer, hopefully. You're preventing skin cancer by having a high SPF. The thing that we realized is that people want more from their sunscreen than just protection from skin cancer. They also want to prevent the spots on the face. They want to pre present, prevent the photo aging. And for that, we want to do uh, a better, uh, more what's called the wide spectrum sunscreen. So the wider spectrum sunscreen also should cover UVA. The problem uh, becomes uh, how do we measure the UVA damage? And that we're, we're going to get into it. It's a little bit more technical, but it's something that, that we may, we'll just gloss over. The second point that, that is very important is does the sunscreen stay on after sun exposure? After one, after sun exposure, but two, after going in the water. So uh, what we want to have is we want to now do a, do a second test we put on the sunscreen and have the person swim in water for, for 80 minutes or uh, soak their hand in water 50, for, for 40 or 80 minutes. And we want to see what the SPF becomes after that. So, so we want to be able to have a sunscreen not only that is uh, a good SPF, but also a sunscreen that, has, uh, that doesn't get washed off, that is a substantive that stays on. The labeling becomes very important in that we want a sunscreen with a high SPF, which measures UVB protection. Uh, and then we want to have something that says that it is broad spectrum, okay, meaning that it covers also UVA. Uh, and then we want to also make sure that we have uh, an effectiveness that is uh, that makes it water resistant. So these are the things that we want you to sort of watch for it. Now in Canada, we have if you, if you get your, your own sunscreen bottle and you look at it, most of them will have a little label that will say, will have, it looks like a little diamond, uh, not diamond, or oval, uh, uh, almond shaped thing at the bottom of the bottle. And that uh, is a certification by the Canadian Dermatology Association. So the Canadian Dermatology Association, we do not do the testing, but we verify the testing. We make sure that's done in, in, a, in a reliable lab. Uh, by a by third, third uh, body, not, not done by the company itself. Uh, and they do all this testing for UVB, for UVA, uh, make sure that the, there's no ingredients that are damaging. And this is done, uh, this was uh, done as a service by the Canadian Dermatology Association, and that helps you out a lot. So if you look, if you look for that logo, it makes you look, uh, it makes you aware of which one is safe, so you don't have to go read all the fine print and become a big maker. Uh, as an aside, for me, I was the person who certified all the sunscreens from, I think, 2000 to about 2008 uh, for the Canadian Dermatology Association. And that's where my degree in chemistry helped me because I was able to do all this stuff and understand all the chemistry behind it and whatever. So for me, it's a big, I'm a big uh, uh, fan of this because it, it, I think it's a very big service. If people knew about that, that little logo, it makes us much, it makes it much easier to, to select. And the same thing is done by the American Academy of Dermatology. I must say that our system is a bit better because we have better uh, sunscreen ingredients. They don't have the sunscreen ingredients of L'Oreal, for example, uh, whereas we have a better um, spectrum of sunscreens. So UVA protection, again, I'm going to do this in a much faster way. It's less important. It's very difficult to have reliable UVA protection. Now, the point about UVA protection is if you really want it, which you want, you're doing it just to, to keep your skin healthy, young, not sun damaged, you want to have UVA protection. So for sure, to get UVA protection, you need a very high SPF. So no matter what, you're going to find that you cannot find the sunscreen where you can tan and not do, uh, not do uh, sun damage. So the SPF is always going to be 50 or 50 plus. We have all these technical ways of doing it. And if you believe the... SPF as far as protecting from UVB of being a 50 plus, the level of protection for UVA is much less. It's in the order of three or four. So we're, we're decreasing the uh, UVA damage by about 75%. Now, if you want to get into visible protection, then you really need to, to wear clothing. You need to do things that are, that are opaque, that are, going to, uh, that are going to be blocking the visible light. And that's really, people will not, will not tolerate that as far as aesthetically. Uh, again, more technical stuff is less important. I would rather leave uh, time for questions at the end and talk about uh, 
uh, sunscreen, but we try and cover if we uh, if we go. Oh, that's my okay. So if we go to 400, then this becomes visible. We uh, visible light starts from 400 to 800. So we want to get as much like like as big an elephant as possible right next to 400 and, and not hit 400, so it doesn't become visible. Whereas a sunscreen like which which covers only UVB really doesn't do anything for photo aging. So this is really where, where the, the technical stuff gets in. I still have about maybe 10 minutes, so maybe I'll skip all this and then leave more time for questions at the end. So we do really, we do testing. It's not ethical to not put on sunscreen on people and tell them, you know, let's see how many, how many skin cancers you get. Uh, so it's not, it's not fair that way, but but uh, we do try and do split face, meaning we do one side, not the other side, and see if it makes a difference or not. Uh, now, this is, I just want to do one more slide, which is uh, the difference between physical or chemical sunscreens. Physical sunscreens are basically particles of uh, inorganic materials, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, iron uh, oxide. And basically they are scattered, they are sort of in, suspended in the cream and they're applying your skin and they're basically reflecting the the energy so these are these are physical blockers other sunscreens are there the chemical sub blocks that absorb the energy take the hit they they get uh, actually physically damaged and then there are other chemicals that stabilize and bring them back to their own way and they convert the energy to lower energy heat uh, lower energy uh, heat particles infrared energy that just warms up the skin, but doesn't do any damage. So uh, the best sunscreens, honestly, are a combination of both. So things that contain both the physical and the chemical sunscreen. Obviously, there are situations where you want to have one only and, and uh, not the other. So for example, there are people that don't, the, the physical sunblocks will tend to make your face white and sort of whitish gray. It makes you look like, like uh, uh, like a, a shiny uh, reflection. And some people don't like that, especially if they're going to work. So we have only pure chemical sunscreens without the physical. Some people don't like the, uh, the chemical uh, for, for uh, allergy reasons or whatever. So they end up using only the physical and then they have, uh, and then you can see them, they, they sort of, they, uh, they shine. And then the, the new preparations are somewhat better. They're not, uh, not as white as they used to be. Okay, so this is the inorganic. We talked about titanium and zinc. Uh, they're, they're called chemical free, but they, but they still do this. There's one slide uh, that, do, yes, they do prevent sunburn. Uh, the rule with uh, sunscreens is that uh, you want to use more rather than less, so that uh, you really want to use about an ounce all over your body. Okay, an ounce, so, so you do the calculation, I used to do this, uh, Lily used to scream at me. She used to say, you're, you're taking too much. But when we used to go with the kids for two weeks on holiday in, in the Caribbean, it's a, an ounce per person per day for 14 days. So we, we need five pounds of sunscreen. Uh, and we end up giving it to our friends. So we used to take about five pounds of sunscreen for two weeks between the five of us. So so uh, she used to say, half the suitcase is sunscreen. But uh, that's about how much you need for If you're really going to protect, you're going to be outside all day long. And sometimes you have to reapply. So you really need a lot if you're, you're uh, spending a holiday in the sun. Now, there's different preparations. The rule I make is that the best sunscreen is the sunscreen that you're going to use. So any sunscreen is better than, than saying, oh, I don't like the sunscreen. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not going to use it. So if you're happy with the one that you're using, uh, then, then uh, keep using it and find a preparation that looks like, uh, like that, maybe with a better number. But basically, uh, men, for example, like sprays better. Uh, emulsions are the most common ones. Uh, other people use gels, they tend to feel cold. The problem with sprays is that people don't spray them evenly, so they look like zebras after that. They, they tan and they areas of tanning and areas of loss uh, of, of no tan, so that they, 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 they have different colors. Uh, sticks I like very much, for example, for the upper lip, for around the eyes, they tend to, uh, uh, to not move. And then there's lots of uh, cosmetics that they add, by the way, also we put on sunscreen uh, in, in our cosmetic. Please don't use cosmetic sunscreens as real sunscreen because you apply them where you want to apply them rather than all over the skin. So if you're using a, a cosmetic, which is a, a foundation, you're going to apply the foundation on your high cheeks. You're, you're not going to put it on your, 
on your chin, for example. So, so people don't apply it evenly because they, they want to look uh, they want to look good. So they're still better than nothing, but don't count as the cosmetic as your sunscreen. Children in pregnancy uh, basically take uh, take advice. Uh, uh, we're not in that age group. Photo, uh, one second. So general, generally though, stay away from the sun between 10 and 4. Uh, try and seek shelter whenever you can. Have siestas at lunchtime, like, like look for a nap. Uh, use at least a 30, but remember, if you want to stay anti-aging, use 50 or over. Uh, and all the rest really doesn't, uh, doesn't really matter very much. We apply every two hours. You have to be really playing tennis for two hours to reapply. So if you're going in and out or if you're in an umbrella once a day, probably is enough. As, uh, and if you're doing spray sunscreens, like I said, you need to uh, to really apply uh, apply a lot and then rub it to make sure that, that you don't end up looking like like striped like a zebra. Uh, clothing also works. Okay, this this is really what I wanted to uh, to cover. Is there's a, a big resistance uh, as far as using sunscreens because they're worried about uh, about. Uh, uh, last time I gave this lecture, somebody said to me, but. Uh, uh, sunscreens cause cancer. They prevent a lot more than they than they cause. So, so if, if they cause at all, so so the uh, there's all kinds of uh, data that's done in, in uh, not even in lab animals, but in in vitro in, in, in little uh, cell culture, and they they tend to have an effect perhaps of adding or doing something uh, negative, but it really does not happen in, in in the skin in real life. We add things like remember retinol was the vitamin A that we talked about. They have a, they do prevent this. There's some people that are allergic to benzophenols as far as getting an allergy to the sunscreen and then they get the worst sunscreens. And the benzophenols, uh, that's the last uh, uh, paragraph there, have estrogen-like effects in, believe it or not, in algae, but not even in humans. Uh, this may be a, the, the reported decreased fertility, fertility in men, uh, which, which I, anyway, it's to be verified again. Uh, they talk about them being producing funny-looking uh, uh, frogs in in, uh, in lakes, but the, the clear thing is that they definitely have an effect on the coral reef. So that places like Hawaii block benzophenones from being used in, in uh, because they tend to uh, to make the coral reef sterile and then the, the, the reefs turn white because they, they're not they're not reproducing. So uh, this is really where the uh, where, where the big discussion as far as that goes. There are sunscreens that don't have it, but I think that the, the overall um, preponderance of evidence is that, is that they're safe and they're clean. Uh, the titanium and zinc oxide, they talk about nanoparticles. I don't know if, any, if you care about it. You have to be literally licking them and they have to be uh, broken down and then penetrate. They won't penetrate through skin, but they're worried about babies, uh, uh, you know, like licking their hands or something. And, uh, and the stuff penetrates into the dark because of it. Even then, it's a very far-fetched, and, and they would much rather be stuck to the to what's inside than penetrate into the cells of the of the uh, of the stomach. Uh, I think that that's it. I, I want to leave time for for questions. Hopefully, the, uh, something will come up. I'm going to open the chat and see if there's any questions. So the first question, which is excellent, uh, thank you, Gloria. Uh, does using sunscreen block vitamin D that we get from the sun? Definitely yes. Okay, so taking bite. So that's the reason I, I mentioned that uh, vitamin D. You need to take a supplement. So it seems as if we're not getting enough vitamin D, uh, D anyway, uh, because we're not getting exposed enough to the sun. We tend to be. Uh, uh, I'm generalizing a bit. We tend to be a bit darker, so we tend to be not Gloria, but I am. Uh, we tend to be darker, so our skin is more uh, resistant to absorbing the vitamin D to do the effect. But uh, so I definitely suggest that we take vitamin D as a supplement. And the sunscreen is blocking the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the production of vitamin D in the skin. Uh, next question is, am I allowed to use, uh, am I allowed to suggest uh, sunscreen for Schwartz? Uh, for sure, I, I, I'll, I'll give you two brand names that I like. Uh, uh, I really mentioned the, uh, uh, the CDA logo. So if you're, you see the CDA logo, you can be very safe that it's fine, so it sort of obviates me from giving brands. But the ones, the companies that I like are L'Oreal and uh, Neutrogena. Neutrogena tends to be cheaper. It tends to be a nice feel. Um, I, like, I like the product as far as it doesn't feel oily when, when you apply it on the skin. Uh, it has a sort of, it's called dry touch. And 
Neutrogen and then uh, L'Oreal competitive. Now L'Oreal, you won't see it under that name, but they own Vichy, they own Ombrel, they own uh, Antilios, and obviously their own brands uh, as well. So there's a big line of products from, from L'Oreal and an, ex an excellent line of products also from, from Neutrogen from Johnson & Johnson. The third company, which is really excellent for physical blockers, is a company a company called Aven. Aven is uh, A-V-E-N-E, -E, and they make great sunblocks. <laughs> the next question is the Dead Sea Mud. The Dead Sea Mud is it's a very interesting question. That, thank you. It is really excellent for two things, for people with psoriasis and people with certain types of eczema. So it tends to... Uh, for normal skin care, I don't think it does very much. The, the question is from Albert. Thank you very much for asking the question. If for normal skin care, I wouldn't be pushing it. Um, it there, there's a, people exploited it and they made all kinds of companies that uh, use this product as part of their skin care program. And I think it's great marketing, but it's not so great as far as doing, uh, helping skin that is otherwise normal. Uh, Anne asked me, how many uh, avocados should we eat? Ideally, we want you to, at the point that I'm making about it being used up is we want you to eat it on, 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 almost on a daily basis. If you can eat half a, half a small avocado a day, it would be great. Eating you know, three avocados on Sunday probably does less good than, than eating half an avocado you know, every day or a fraction of an avocado. Uh, but that's sort of, that's the, uh, the, 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 the food that came most consistently or most repeatedly with the, with, uh, this uh, Dr. Graves' talk that was mentioning before, uh, Ruth Nabi. Okay, so we're, we're the, the question is that we're using uh, or washing our hands constantly. So that's fine. So if you're washing your hands, at least it's you're limiting it, uh, you're, you're the damage from soaps to, uh, to the hands only. Uh, I would use more moisturizer uh, for the hands whenever you can. So every third or fourth time that you use, uh, you wash with, uh, uh, with soap, uh, you try and... Uh, put a moisturizer. This is something that I do about 30 or 40 times a day but we're running out of time, but I want to show you one more thing. Please, when you wash your hands, don't wash the back of the hands. So, so we want you to wash the palms, the tips of the fingers, tips of the fingers, the thumb, other thumb, and the first web. Don't wash the back of the hands. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. So don't wash, don't do this between the fingers, okay? We tend to learn bad habits and we're not, unless we're making pizza or, or you know, boxing or something, we're not really touching other people with the back of our hands. We don't need to wash that as often. Do use moisturizers, but also wash the parts that get dirty. You know, don't, don't wash everything necessarily. I don't know if there's still one more questions. Uh, avocados, oh, sorry, there's more. No, that's it, I think. Uh, okay, so we talked about sunscreens. Okay, so I don't know who asked this, but what, what if my father uh, had great skin and my mother had the less... Uh, as older looking skin, it's very much uh, what how she spent her time in the sun as well. So, so uh, the main things that you can do uh, as far as keeping your skin young, apart from, from choosing different parents, is uh, staying out of the sun. And I don't, I'm, I'm talking to the to the choir, already all converted. Smoking is the worst thing for the skin. So, so smoking, we're not talking about uh, uh, damaging your your health, but really damaging your um, uh, the actual structure of the skin. The skin gets older, the skin gets uh, yellower, more wrinkles, looser skin. Uh, so, if, so if anybody is smoking, uh, when I was younger and I had a bigger, a bigger mouth, I used to tell people, uh, I don't care if you are, but don't care about your health, I just want you to look good in the coffee. So please quit smoking. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, you know, so basically, uh, now if I say that, they'll, they'll probably sue me, but, uh, uh, it's very important to, uh, not, not to smoke and avoid the sun. So I, I don't know. Some we we take the genes from uh, both our parents. Obviously, I don't think one gives us more uh, skin quality uh, genes than the other. But uh, uh, what you can do, we can still make a big difference at any age by by, by doing the simple proportions. I think I, I think I I think I answered all the questions. And uh, anyway, let me take the opportunity again to thank everybody for. Uh, for being so numerous and for for uh, being so patient with me, I'm uh, I try to cover more, so I speak very fast in general. So uh, I'm glad that you told me to speak slower, and and uh, um, I'll be happy. Hopefully, we'll see you in person soon, and then 
you can jump on me and ask me questions uh, as well. Thank you again. I have a question. <clears throat> First, I want to say thank you, Gladys, because this Dr. Balbul speaking to us at this time is the best time to listen uh, just before summer. And the other thing I wanted to say, it reminded what you said about not pulling on your face and not scrubbing and just be mild with it and use water. I remember my mom used to keep telling us, we're three sisters, la a la And what you said is it's exactly that. It's the old mother's wisdom. And the other thing is you skipped for the children and babies, but a lot of us are grandmothers. So I'm wondering, like, let's say if my daughter um, leaves her child with me and I take her to the garden, uh, just keep her in the shade or uh, like no sunscreen for babies, right? Two-year-old? Okay, so, so let's, let's define babies. Uh, till about a year, for sure, we don't want to use sunscreen. We don't want to have them in direct sunlight. Okay, so now, once we pass a year, we want to use sunscreen, and then I probably would, would use a physical sunblock. Okay, the one with zinc in it, and less, uh, less chemicals. Staying in the shade is not worth very much, because there's so much reflection from, from things around us mm -hmm. that we're still, we can get sunburned under an umbrella on the beach, okay, easily, okay? So, so don't fool yourself into thinking that I'm going to sit in the shade and get protected. So if they're out in the garden and on a nice, beautiful day like today, please uh, put, put sunscreen on them. So anybody over a year, and the ones that are beyond that, we really want to be to stay in the, in the trolley, in the Arabana, in the, you know, and really cover them from, from four sides. So they're really, that's really, mm -hmm. that's real shade. You know, sitting under, under an umbrella or under a tree is not real shade. Okay, okay so thank you. For sure, and in that, you know, use physical blocks. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Dr. Bilbul. We learned so much from you today. Thank you very much. It is a very concentrated. I, I was very happy to be here. Thank you so much.